All right, so I'm going to pull the camera here real quick, and we will go ahead and get it going. Again, trading divergences is critical for you to understand. It's not really a trading indicator. It's more of a trading strategy or another additional layer of confluence that you can actually add to your arsenal and to your tools. At the end of the day, what do we have? We have tools from technical analysis that we're able to use every single day to predict where the price is going. Simple. That is what trading is about. And again, everything that we've taught can be used for crypto, futures, forex, stocks. Do not let anyone fool you by thinking that the technical analysis is different. It is the exact same technical analysis. And again, for those that are trading options, you can easily migrate over to Forex. You can easily migrate over to crypto. So again, this is a tool that can, or a scale, I should say, that, that could definitely pay you big across these different financial instruments, okay? So what is uh, divergence? Again, divergence, it helps us understand when a trend is likely to end, right? It helps us find trend reversals. I, I put that twice there. Um, and it also allows us to understand whenever the price action is not agreeing with the oscillator or the indicator. Again, keep that in mind. Divergence, at the end of the day, what that means is that price action and the indicator, they're not, they're not agreeing. They're not seeing eye to eye. I put here a couple of different indicators that you can actually use to be able to find these different divergences, right? So you can use these stochastics, which we talked about in the past. You can use the MACD, which we've talked about in the past. Can someone tell me what does the MACD stand for? And again, I'm asking you these questions because I want you to know, I want you to have a PhD when it comes to all these different tools. Can anyone tell me what does the MACD stand for? Excellent job. Kelly, Steph B, phenomenal. Kadia, Tina, great job. Moving average, convergence, divergence, okay? Next, we have the RSI. That's another indicator that you can also use to find divergences. Can someone tell me what, what does RSI stand for? Excellent job, M. Patrick, excellent. I love it. I love it. At the end of the day, you want to know what these tools mean. And the reason why is because oftentimes you find people where they trade and they use the MACD, they use the RSI, but they don't really know what's the what's the scope behind it, what's even the name, right? So I want you to know this stuff in and out 100%, right? So the reason why I put this here, the stochastics, the MACD, and the RSI is because you can honestly use any momentum indicator to find divergences. Again, the stochastics, the MACD, the RSI, and even also the TCM squeeze too, these are all momentum indicators. So momentum indicators are definitely critical for you to find these different divergences, right? Uh, next we have here, again, what is a divergence? Divergence is when the price action and the indicators are not agreeing. I have a couple of screenshots here in the next couple of sli uh, slides that will show you a bit of an example of what this looks like. Again, a divergence is just a heads up. It's not a full confirmation. It's just a heads up that the, that the momentum might change, that there might be a trend. You know, that trend may, may end soon and there may be a reversal. So trading divergences could definitely help us out when it comes to buying the dip, when it comes to having good entries for any reversals across any different financial industries, right? I have here a couple of different screenshots. This is actually from StockBets, so shout out to StockBets. And what is this? At the end of the day, here at the bottom, we have the RSI, right? We have our RSI and we also have price action. You can see here, and I'm just gonna quickly get my tool, you can see how the price is coming down, right? Price is coming down. Second, I'm going to go ahead and just, here we go. Let's get a better one. Yeah, price is coming down here. You see how the price is making a lower low? However, the RSI is making what? Trying to make a higher high, right? So we're not agreeing. We're not, right here, we are not agreeing. Price is saying something different than what the RSI is saying, right? So this basically means that there is a divergence. We're not agreeing at this moment. At this point right here, we may have a reversal. And that's where you see that the price definitely reverses and we do have a trend, a change when it comes to the trend. How is that different? It's definitely different than, for example, this one. RSI is up, price is also up, right? RSI is up, price is also up. The RSI comes down, price also comes down. Here, price comes down, but RSI is up. We're not agreeing. So that is a divergence. Drop a one if that makes sense. Drop a one if that explanation makes sense. You got it. You got it down pack. And, okay, excellent. Now, let me ask you this. Can someone, again, we just covered this. When we talk about divergence, can someone in the chat or come of mute? What does that mean? When the price is what? When the price is not what? 
when the price is not agreeing, right? The price is not matching, correct, right? The, there's no match when it comes to price action here, when it comes to the candlesticks and the oscillator. A, a, a word that people really get confused about is oscillator. So oscillator is just indicator, right? But people try to make themselves, you know, want to, you know, be smart and stuff and sound smart. So they, you know, get these crazy words. Oscillator, indicator, and again, is not matching the momentum. Great job there, Devon. And again, can someone tell me, drop in the chat a momentum indicator. What, drop in the chat at least one, TTM, MACD, great job. Anyone else, RSI, there's another one, stochastics. There you go, excellent. So you can use any of those and you'll be able to find divergence when it comes to these different stock charts, right? Another chart here, right? What do we see here? We have the MACD, and sorry that it's so blurry. We, we have the MACD as the underlying indicator the MACD is indeed a momentum indicator, so it is still valid. And again, to be completely honest, you, you, you could definitely use the divergent strategy on the lower time frames, your 30 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes. However, I like him better on the higher time frames because the higher time frames, it really confirms that there may be a exhaustion when it comes to the trend, right? So what do we see here? Price is going up, so we're making a higher high. However, MACD is coming down, and what do you see right, uh, right after? Right at the right at the same spot, we see a, a change when it comes to right prices coming down. However, the MACD clouds are going up. Can someone tell me what are the two EMAs that are part of the that make up the MACD? Thomas said volume. What are the two EMAs? We need to get better at this one. We need to get better at this one. Okay, and I'll do. If you want me to do a a class on the MACD, drop a one. I could definitely plan for that. I have a whole note section uh, as part of my notes, and I I'll, I will definitely make sure to cover that. Okay. The two EMAs are 12 and 26. Those are the two EMAs. Great job, Jasmine. Um, those are, that is very critical for you to understand. Um, so it's different than the nine and 21. The nine and 21 is what we actually apply up here when it comes to the price action, right? So 12 and 26, the clouds is going down, price is going up. There's actually a divergence, right? And what do we see? This makes, this may signify, hey, <laughs> yeah, this may signify a change in trend. What do we see here? MACD goes up, price is coming down. Oh, what do we see? A reversal. Something critical for you to understand when it comes to the MACD, oftentimes when the MACD crosses is because it has a divergence. Oftentimes when a price is just trending and then we have what? We have a cross of the 12 and 26 EMAs. This is likely going to reverse. And what do we see? Price goes down. What do we see here? Price goes up, price goes up, and then we see a change when it comes to that trend. I have one more example, I believe. Yeah. What do we see here? Divergence going up, the oscillator going down. And what do we see here? Perfect trend reversal. So here's a question for the earners part of the chat. Anyone can definitely come up with me. Just raise your hand. What is the criteria? What are the things that you're looking for to be able to identify a divergence when it comes to price action? Can anyone tell me? Drop it in the chat. More than happy to collaborate. Come up mute. Drop, you know, raise your hand, whatever you want. Opposite direction. Someone said trend. Great job, Jasmine. What else? Price and oscillator are opposite. Phenomenal. I love it. It's a disagreement when it comes to price action. Highest points. These are all valid. Everything here is valid. Mismatch, higher, 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 low. I, I love that. QM, I love that. That lets me know that you actually understand market structure. I love that a lot. Okay. So with that being said, phenomenal job, everybody. Here is the summary. If the stock is making new highs, and again, this can be stock, crypto, futures, forex, whatever, right? But the RSI starts to look to, to make lower highs. This warns that the price uptrend may be weakening. That's what it is. It's just, it, all it means is just exhaustion. Price action and the indicator are not agreeing. Hence, there is exhaustion. Hence, this is a negative divergence. And we may see a trend reversal. Again, it could be up, it could be down, but a trend reversal may happen. 